Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw, and I'm here with Vicki Tolman, who's the executive director and owner of the Red Carnation Hotel Collection. And I've been lucky enough to stay in, I think, I think I've got almost, your prop, almost all your properties down. Uh, maybe some in South Africa are missing, but uh, I, I got a pretty good collection. The London ones I have beat. I have every one of them. But uh, they are marvelous uh, luxury boutique hotels. And uh, they're they're really they have a beautiful one. The the, the really the the one in Ashford Castle is uh, just amazing. So we're going to talk to Vicky about the Red Carnation hotels, and uh, also obviously what's going on in this crisis during them. And we're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, Vicky, how are you, and where are you? Um, I'm very well. Um, I'm now in Geneva. I was in London during lockdown for four months, which was as challenges, uh, challenging as I think it's been for most people in, in lockdown. And um, then I came to Geneva a few weeks ago. And uh, it's, it's a very different environment here. It's a lot more free. People can go out. Um, people seem less concerned with it. Um, London seems to be struggling moving forward for all the reasons we know. But I have to say Switzerland seemed to have handled this pandemic very well. They were a little bit all over the place, like most countries at the beginning. And um, now people are, are living their life really quite normally here. They put back the mask protocols in as of a few, last week, I think. Um, but people just seem to be getting on with their lives here. So no, that's that's great. I know I I, gr I grew up in part in Lausanne, just down the lake, so I know the the Switzerland very well, and uh, I can see where the Swiss could could get the get their act together and do this. So I'm glad you're safe in in Switzerland. Now uh, let let's talk a little bit about because first of all, your your parent company, uh, the Travel Corporation, is celebrating an anniversary this this year, correct? This year was a very, very important year for us. We were celebrating 100 years in hospitality. Um, my grandfather opened the first hotel 100 years ago, which was in Paternoster in South Africa. Um, we've come a long way since then. I couldn't have called it a red carnation, but it was certainly the birth of my family's business. And so this year was really important for us to celebrate that. And we had to make a lot of um, changes. Obviously, we were going to um, have a, a huge celebration with uh, many of our teams coming to London um, to honor this day. And um, so we're doing it in different ways, I would say. So, um, Yeah, well, I, said, I, I did see that one. The, you, you did produce this marvelous video, and it is up on Insider Travel Report, and it really is uh, I mean, it, it really takes you about the history, about all the people of Red Carnation. And, and let, let's look at that history. You said you did start the first hotel, and it was uh, the first, uh, it was in South Africa. But how, how did Red Carnation Hotel Collection evolve? Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, it's your mother, right, who, B. Tolman, exactly. Uh, exactly. who is the founder and um, obviously has a lot to say at, uh, over the years about what is in a Red Carnation Hotel. We'll talk about that in a bit, but let's, let's look at the history of Red Carnation. You had the one in South Africa, and then how did it evolve after that? Well, first of all, that was my grandfather's hotel, and then my parents started the first, bo first boutique chain in South Africa together. My mom was 18, and my father was 21. And um, She, they she cooked in the kitchen, if I recall, right? <laughs> my mom was meant to be a nursery school teacher and my dad said come and help me out a little bit and that was the end of that and so they worked very very hard and built what was at the time the first boutique hotels in South Africa and then we left um, in the 70s to go to the United Kingdom to London because of apartheid and um, and we had a hotel there but it wasn't yet a red carnation it was called the Montcalm and um, and then in 1982, we bought the first uh, Red Carnation Hotel, which is the Chesterfield Hotel in Mayfair. And at the time, my father said to my mother, would you like to recreate uh, another collection of hotels? And um, she was delighted to do so. And she named it Red Carnation, which was after the small miniature Red Carnation my father has been wearing since I think he was 21. I so know, I've seen it many times over the years. Yes, it's very, uh, so very, very, very dapper, as they said. Yeah, he, he is, I must say. So um, that's where Red Carnation actually began or was born, was in 1982 with the Chesterfield in Mayfair. 
Yeah, and then it expanded. Obviously, you have uh, you've had a big focus in London with Red Carnation, and I, I forget how many properties. I, I think I've stayed in most of them, but it's how many yes. properties in London now? Six, and um, and we have a, um, a hotel in Dorset. Yeah, that's the one I haven't done. I have not done that one, but I have stayed in all the others, and uh, they are marvelous. The Milestone, of course, which at one time was kind of your marquee property, still is, but uh, but then you've expanded abroad, too. You had the original South Africa properties, correct? No, so when we left South Africa, we left everything. Left everything. So you had to go back and, and restart. Right? Yeah, we didn't go back till after apartheid and um, started reinvesting. And we bought uh, over time three properties there, which was the Twelve Apostles and then the Oyster Box and uh, Bushman's Clough. All of which are very famous properties in South Africa. And uh, I, I guess you had to wait until after all the apartheid was over to get some really great hotels uh, and everybody knows those properties, Whoever, anyone who goes to South Africa. So South Africa, London, and then of course, uh, you have the property in Geneva, uh, right near, near, near you. And uh, then you have one actually in Palm Beach, which I was just in, in Florida. Uh, and then uh, you have, uh, of course, uh, the one that is, you know, was really completely renovated a few years back, Ashford Castle, right? Exactly, so we have Ashford Castle, which is um, one of our, you know, greatest prides and joy. They just won um, Best Hotel in UK and Ireland, number one when with travel and leisure. And in fact, the Oyster Box in South Africa also won number one Best Hotel in Africa. So we're so proud of those two properties. And in fact, many of our hotels were listed. Um, we also have the Lodge at Ashford Castle, which is a beautiful property and offers an alternative um, value, I would say, with all the benefits of enjoying the activities at Ashford. It's a very popular wedding destination. I can imagine. I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so many people get like to get married there. And then we have two beautiful properties in Guernsey. Which oh, is I, for, I almost forgot country. about those. That's where, you know, the, that, those I've not been to, but it sounds wonderful. They are wonderful. Guernsey is the most enchanting, enchanting island, I have to say. So, um, Old Government House and Duke of Richmond. So, um, we currently have 17 properties, but we were very excited to be opening um, what was going to is our greatest pride and joy at the moment, which is called Kijara. It's uh, the first red carnation safari experience in Botswana. Mm -hmm. um, we were meant to open the 1st of June. And um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to complete it because they closed all the borders. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting for um, Botswana to open, for South Africa to, to open, and then we can complete the lodge, which is going to be as we like to say, or my father's actually said, there's nothing quite like it. So we've created a, a, an incredible lodge and safari experience with the years of, first of all, being South African, and then my family's passion for safari and the wilderness. So we're putting all of our love, our care, our attention into this um, beautiful, beautiful property, which we've rebuilt. It mm -hmm. did exist before, but we've rebuilt it. It's in the Okavango, and it's... Uh, It'll be a water and land experience. So um, we're very excited about that. And when do you think, uh, when, I mean, obviously the pandemic's still going on, but any idea when that will open now? Well, um, we, we're hoping October, but, you know, we have to get in there to finish it. So yeah. um, we, we, we are waiting for that day to happen. So, well, um, well, I tell you, if you do anything like uh, when you uh, redid, Ash I saw Ashford Castle before and after. Uh, it was a beautiful property before, but after you finished it, I got a chance to see it last year. And it, it, all our, our travel advisor readers, uh, viewers out there, if you ever get a chance to see Ashford, it's it's such a marvelous property. As you said, the lodge nearby is is it, it's its own luxury property. I tell you, it's it, it may be a slightly lower rate, but it's. You have all the, the facilities. I mean, there's a you added a, a, a wine cellar, which I thought that would have they would have had one, but you you built one down below. You added a spa, which was amazing, and really revamped the entire castle, but didn't change anything in a way. I mean, I said, you know what, everything's refreshed, but it's not like it still reflects the castle feeling. So you you got that down. I think, I think that's one of the things we really try and do is to maintain the heart and soul of each property and not turning it into something that it isn't. So we, we recognize its, um, its personality and its sort of differences and then try and enhance it. 
And uh, that's what I think we've done in every single property. We have Summer Lodge also. It was um, the house of Thomas Hardy, the famous author. And um, we also try and uplift, enhance, um, and while still being very respectful of, of its origin or, or bones, I would say. You well, cer cer certainly uh, every time, even in, the, the, in Palm Beach, in the, in the Chesterfield there, uh, I, I was, you know, it's, it's a very English feeling. We had English tea, uh, afternoon tea, and uh, all of the decor, I, I could have been in London. Uh, it's the same kind of feel. And, and it really is. It, it, I mean, I know probably your South Africa properties are a little different, but at least in Europe and in London and in the U.S., uh, it's, it's, a it's a specific feel, but very individualized. Because, and I was going to ask you that question. I'm, I'm answering it now. What makes for a red carnation property? What are the characteristics? Uh, obviously, service is big and decor, location. Yes. So definitely, I would say the location. Definitely um, highlighting what makes that property special from architecture. We, we take a lot of time and trouble to... Um, choose the right art, antiques, furnishings. My sister and my mother do that. And, uh, and uh, really a lot of care and love goes into every single room we do. I would say what, one of the things I think with Red Carnation being a family-run business is we are all totally passionate about it. And there's a lot of power with that. Um, I think something else that's very special are our incredible teams. We would be nothing without our teams and each hotel has a general manager who's been with us for many years. Most of them have been with us for many years. And um, they have enough autonomy to make it their own um, all at the same time while working with the things that we, um, that matter to us, which is really, you know, making the guests have the very best possible experience that they can have. Yeah. And um, we, we focus on generous hospitality. We focus on passionate service. We care a lot about our teams, you know, because happy teams make happy guests. And that's something that I know I've certainly learned from my mother. And, um, and then a lot of training, you know, there's a huge amount of training that's done um, on all levels. And then I think another thing is the opportunities we give all of our staff. Anyone can be anything they want to mm. become. They can grow. We've had so many amazing success stories in Red Carnation um, we have a management program where we have um, these wonderful young people. They come and they become general managers, assistant managers, food and beverage managers. It's a fast track to um, having a management position. Um, I think also the fact that we are so respectful and honor uh, sustainability. So we have now put in so many different um, systems and practices in each hotel from getting rid of single-use plastic to uh, food wastage to energy saving to many different initiatives, also supporting our communities. Each hotel has their own community. So we try and work as much as we can with local partners. Um, so I think these are all the things that make Red Carnation, we think, special. Well, I know that your, your parent, parent company, the Travel Corporation, also has a not-for-profit uh, affiliate called the Treadright Foundation, which... Uh, uh, I know that uh, Brett Tolman, your brother, is very passionate about and has really been at the forefront. And uh, every one of uh, uh, the, t the Travel Corporation's companies uh, works with that foundation and it, other, other companies work with it as well. And it's been a marvelous addition. I don't know too many companies that uh, have that kind of uh, commitment to sustainability. Right. We want to make travel matter. And that is actually um, having the right footprint, leaving a lighter footprint, making a difference and um, I have to give all the credit to my brother because it was his brainchild. He's been doing it now, I think it's for over 10 years and um, he inspires us all and uh, to ensure we're doing all what is the right thing to be doing today, which is such a huge important part of everybody's responsibility in their business. Well, I know I saw him in action. I was with a tourism cares group in Jordan and we, uh, we spent uh, almost 10 days in Jordan and uh, uh, we visited a lot of sustainable tourism projects and special attractions that were created by local communities. And uh, surprise, surprise, about six months or even less after uh, we got back, a lot of, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, a lot of the, your affiliate companies 
uh, you know, a lot of the tour operators suddenly seem to have a lot of those in their Jordan programs. Uh, so he actually act, he acted on that and and got got that in, and it's it's an amazing uh, amazing accomplishment, I think. Thank you. Well, we focus on people, culture, and wildlife. So those three pillars make up um, the Tread Right Foundation, and um, and then each of TTC's brands will then do what they can do within their brand and yeah, with no, them. That's so. great. Now, now I did want to talk to you. Obviously, we are in the midst of this horrible coronavirus pandemic. And uh, what, what has Red Carnation done to address sort of, as you mentioned earlier, the health and safety concerns of guests? Uh, what protocols have you introduced uh, at your hotels? And uh, for, for that matter, are all your hotels reopened now? No. They're not? No. Okay. So, um, it's extremely challenging. So Geneva never actually closed, but obviously occupancy was minimal. Um, and then we have oh, one property, two properties now in London that are open, the Chesterfield and 41. We have Summer Lodge that is open, and that's having a lot of success. I mean, the Stication now, as we know, is having a lot of success. And um, Palm Beach is open, Ashford and the Lodge. Um, we The properties in Guernsey are open, but they... You can't fly into Guernsey without a two-week quarantine. So, well, you can quarantine at the hotels. Why not? We are con <laughs> trying to convince everybody to come and spend the time with us. And then South Africa has just literally um, changed the the law, like in the last couple of days, where we can open to leisure travel, but you can't travel within provinces. So, it obviously everything has its. Um, its challenges, but but we slowly getting there. But London's very very quiet. Unfortunately, we have the residences at the milestone that are open. People are obviously wanting to stay more in private residences, right. so um, that's that's done well. But um, no, we still got a few closed. So and then yeah, just the, la the last one I stayed in London was a Rubens, which is the the sort of sister hotel uh, to to uh, uh, forty one. Uh, and I've stayed in 41 many years ago, but uh, it's a marvelous property, and I'm just hopefully it will reopen soon. Uh, uh, 41 is open, but the, the Rubens will as well. Now, uh, what, with regard to the health and safety protocols, have you uh, do you have a new program that you're working on with the, your properties? 100%. So we've taken this very, very seriously on board, as I think everybody in hospitality and travel has been doing. So we've adopted all the rules and regulations from WTTC. And um, all of our teams have had extensive training in that, in the protocols. So each country, it differs what the, the law is. But um, basically, all of our teams are uh, extremely well trained in all the protocols now. Um, the temperatures are taken every day, the masks, now everybody's having to wear masks more or less, but, um, and then we've really, we've introduced um, a system where all the rooms are being disinfected by this uh, product that um, kills all bacteria and germs. So the company is called Premium Purity, but most importantly, every single room, public area and surface is being treated with this product that is easy to maintain. It's also, from a sustainable point of view, it's very, very um, much more beneficial than having all these chemical products. Yeah, I'm sure. So, so we are the only hotel group um, that I'm aware of, certainly in Europe, that have introduced this. And they're going through every single, we have to dismantle every room, and it's every room is this deep cleaning, and then introducing this amazing product that's um, gonna be a game changer moving forward. I'm looking forward. I, I got. I, I see a lot of health and safety. Everyone's putting in health and safety protocols, but uh, we're all wondering just how effective. And personally, I think just wearing a mask is is a biggest thing you can do these days. And and obviously washing your hands. And they say, you know, I've been on calls where they say if you you do those things, if you wear a mask, if you wash your hands, if you keep socially distant, uh, we could pretty much defeat this to begin with. So uh, whether we get a vaccine or not, right. Yeah. Um, I don't know about defeating it, but living with it. Living and with it. Obviously, right. we have all the everything that has to be done. We've done, and um, I must say, a lot of it's been um, driven by Jonathan Ragged, our managing director. He's been uh, extremely vigilant in ensuring that we are doing every single precaution. So um, I feel very, very comfortable about where Red Carnation stands from hygiene. Um, we also have a wellness director 
or a director of wellness in every single hotel. So any guest who has any questions and wants to know what we are doing, they can contact this one dedicated person who will reply to all their questions, as well as the general manager, obviously. It, it, I, I, I experienced that a little bit, uh, you know, in, in many of your hotels. And obviously some, some hotels have larger spa complexes like uh, uh, Ashford. Uh, which is, you know, and then just a general wellness. Now, I wanted to ask you sort of to, to wrap, wrap up here. Uh, what, what does the future hold for Red Carnation? You've been, you, you always, you expand, but you kind of cautiously expand when you find a property, I guess, that you really love. Uh, it's not like you're out to build some kind of huge uh, uh, boutique hotel chain, but uh, do you have any plans to add hotels? We do. We do. So it was um, a dream of my parents that by 220, we would have 20 hotels. So um, Kidra will be the 18th. Okay. And then we have a property that will be opening in Edinburgh called 100 oh. Princess Street. That's going to be a boutique hotel and very similar to 41. And that's also in the process of being re renovated now. And then in Dublin, we also hope in 20. 22 to be opening Hatch Hall, which is the most beautiful listed building and obviously renovating that. So um, we will be having uh, 20 hotels or we have them now, but not all open. Yeah, that, that'll that be amazing. I know uh, Ed, I love Edinburgh and uh, Dublin as well. And, uh, you know, with Dublin, that'll be a great gateway for those who want to go out to Ashford as well. So uh, now, is there anything else you want to get out to uh, our 100,000 travel advisors out there? I know, actually, we're speaking, you're, you're in the midst of meetings with all the virtuoso uh, uh, travel advisors during the virtual virtuoso travel week. So I know you've been busy talking with agents about uh, what they need and what they they, what, what they're experiencing, but is there anything else you'd like to say to the rest of the travel advisors out there? Well, just most importantly, we miss you. We cannot wait to fill our hotels again. We cannot wait to take care of your clients and our guests. I have to say it's, um, it's been a very humbling experience for all of us because who would have ever dreamt this kind of impact would, would that it would have on our business? So um, I think that we've um, having to embrace values of resilience, patience, fortitude, and, um, and faith as well. And then I just think work with the people that love you, that know your product, your, your property. And we're so lucky because we have so many wonderful relationships with our travel partners. Um, they like family. And I think Virtuoso, even though we're not all together, it's just wonderful being able to reconnect. Obviously, the American market is our most important market, and it's the one that is suffering most today. There's absolutely no business coming at this stage. And then just speaking to the agents yesterday, um, we're all looking forward to 2021, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see us coming back um, better than ever. Well, uh, I echo that sentiment. We want to desperately go, go back to Europe, to South Africa, to London. Uh, uh, we've all missed this travel uh, desperately uh, all year long. I think of all the lost travel I've had. You know, usually I travel almost two or three times a month somewhere in the world, and uh, it's it's been a real shock to the system, worse than any 9-11 or anything like that that I've experienced. And we just hope we can get through this and uh, get back to traveling. But, Vicki, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, – Talk to us a bit about Red Carnation. I know you, you're busy doing these all these uh, uh, appointments with uh, Virtuoso Advisors, and uh, I, I do appreciate you, you uh, spending some time with us. It's an absolute pleasure, and we thank you for your friendship, James. You, you, you mean a lot to us, and we just so value and appreciate um, the care and the time and, and effort you've put into Red Carnation, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you back and... Uh, soon as possible well i still have a few more if i want to i want to get the set I, about two or three properties and then the properties in south africa uh, uh and then i think do i get, do i get a, a gift or uh, some kind of bonus card at the end if i get to all those properties is, is, of course now now you got all these new ones opening up i know well you have to be patient in the pipeline but you will get there we will be back Excellent. Well, Vicky, again, thanks again. And uh, I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. Thank you.
Thank you. That was great. I appreciate it. We hope to see you live one of these days again. Um, I keep thinking, uh, you know, they still have a uh, world travel market hasn't canceled yet uh, in London, nor has ILTM. Um, and I keep hoping that, you know, I said, I said, if, if I can, if I can quarantine on the South of France for 14 days somewhere for, uh, I'll go over to ILTM. Exactly. I I'm, think everybody's kind of waiting to see what happens and yeah. they don't want to cancel, but I'm not, I mean, who knows? I, I don't I, know. I, I'm going to believe that. Unfortunately, I think they'll have to cancel, but I keep holding up the faintest of hopes that uh, there'll be enough of, you know, especially here. I mean, we're the worst case scenario here in the United States, and I never would have imagined it. But uh, it's just, um, you know, and I'm in New York now, which is actually relatively, it started being bad, and now it's relatively good. I mean, people are out and about, um, you know, you can go picnic in Central Park, you can go. Uh, restaurants are outside for now. I mean, when it gets to be colder, it's going to be a challenge if, unless something happens. Uh, but it's sort of, I wouldn't say it's normal at all, but people are walking around. I was in, in the park for a picnic with a bunch of friends and it was fine. Uh, went to a, a restaurant. Uh, I'm, I'm a little north of New York and uh, we have a lot of restaurants on the Hudson River here. So uh, that's still kind of nice. And uh, we've got to enjoy what we can. You know, I think that we've got such a finer sense of appreciation of the smallest things. I would say that is definitely COVID has made us value things that maybe we took for granted. Um, things were so easy. And, uh, and now just, I know after coming out of lockdown, just engaging with people face to face was, you know, it took a while. It's an adjustment. And now people are just appreciating having a choice to being able to get together with family or friends. Yeah. I haven't seen, I have two daughters living in America, in New York, and I haven't seen one from uh, since November and the other one from December. So, yeah. Well, um, I have the same thing. I, I luckily have a son who's in the area uh, and he works for uh, public TV. Uh, he's a producer and uh, he's, he's quarantined either with my ex-wife up in uh, just a few. And so I see them occasionally they'll come down uh but he's also goes quarantined with his uh uh fiance uh in new jersey so and he was supposed to get he's supposed to get married in november so uh he's going to get married but they're going to defer the big wedding until you know the party until next year so many uh, young couples are doing that they're going ahead with just to be married and then um and then waiting um we were invited to so many summer weddings that have all been put off but they've gone ahead and gotten married and i think that's the right thing are to they going to go have the party afterwards i guess or yeah, and boy yeah. it'll be a big one yeah well he's going to have a small wedding and uh, although his fiance wants to get married in november outside i'm like nah, i don't know what you're thinking about but and they might go to st lucia or someplace and then they'll have the bigger event in some place in New Jersey. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they just got a new apartment on the west side of New York and they've barely been in it. Uh, they just have, it's too small when they're both of them are working. And then my daughter is down in New Orleans and I haven't seen her right before all this happened. I flew, uh, flew up to Atlanta and moved her back to New Orleans and the, she and her husband bought a small house and uh, uh, he works for, for KPMG, the accounting consulting firm. And uh, she specializes in summer camps. Um, um, and so what she did very creatively, she held, she created her own summer camp for nine to 10 uh, little girls, you know, eight, eight or below and called it Camp Goose. And she had four weeks of uh, summer camp for them. And I don't think she made a lot of money doing it, but she got uh, a lot of experience and it was yeah, a marvelous I thing. I can imagine how grateful the parents were because oh, I think yeah. it's been really challenging on parents with kids not going to school, keeping them busy, working at the same time. So, well, she's uh, she's and now now she just did her first Camp Goose uh, birthday party because the the parents wanted her to continue. The kids wanted to keep doing it. Uh, right. she's also, then she's going to start her teaching nursery school. We hope, uh, depending on what opens and what doesn't uh, down there. But uh, it was odd because I literally moved them back in February and they were so happy to be back in New Orleans. They didn't like Atlanta that much. They, they both went to school in New Orleans. So, uh, nice. uh, but yeah, so I'm, I, unfortunately, you know, my ex-wife, she wants to, she doesn't, can't really travel like that. So she's talking about taking a road trip all the way down to New Orleans. So we'll see what happens, but it's, it's been tough on families. You know, it's, 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 uh, you know, I mean, when I was in the hospital, I'm like, Nobody can come see me. Uh, they can't. It's horrible. You think of how many people were not as lucky as you 
and they died alone. I know. You know? The only people, people uh, they had were the doctors and nurses, and I couldn't keep mine straight. I had about 30 to 40 of nurses and doctors. I had no idea what was going. But anyway, I don't want to take up your time, but it's great to see you, um, and uh, hopefully we'll see each other soon at some venue, uh, whether if we're lucky enough to get to ILTM. And next year, you know, I usually host a lot of stuff for the New York Times Travel Show, but they've already canceled that. And uh, so it's just, uh, I don't know. The next one, I guess, right now is probably Virtuoso if they go to Vienna in March, uh, right. which was the original plan. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, we, we're all hopeful that that's going to happen. But anyway, again, thank you so much for your time. And uh, enjoy the rest of the virtual Virtuoso Travel Week. I'm going to get cracking on that well, in a few minutes. But thank you again, James. And thank you for your wonderful support to Red Carnation. We love it. And we love you. Well, you've got great properties, and uh, you've got a great family, and I have read Stanley's book, so I, I and there was a copy in, in, the, in the Chesterfield, uh, you know, I, although you know what, I think I lent it to one of your, some, one of your team once, and I never got it back, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I, I was like, I, you got to read your book about, this is when it first came out, and I remember walking through the Chesterfield in London, and I said, what's this? <laughs> and so I bought a copy. And uh, it was, uh, and then there was a, a copy in the Chesterfield in, in Palm Beach. But uh, it's a fascinating book. It really is. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I was very, you know, and I've met. I met your father several times over the years. He took a liking to my son. I don't know when I did the the christening of the Marie Antoinette years ago, and we were there. And so uh, he always asks about that, as does Brett. Uh, but yeah, but he's doing well. That was so long ago. Now I feel really old, but that's, well, you know. he's going to be 90 this year and we were doing wow. a huge celebration and obviously oh I wasn't going to mention it on this, but, um, but obviously everything's been canceled. So we're very is sad. He, is he healthy? Is he okay? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it, my, my dad didn't quite make it there, but he was, he had his, he had his mental capacities all the way till 86, 87. My dad is amazing. He is, you know, guiding us through this and thank God for, for him because obviously it's, you know, he's just got so many years of experience he's seen life, but even he says he's never, ever could imagine. None, none of us could imagine this. And just uh, with a little microbe, I feel, feel like it's like War of the Worlds or something, you know, at the end when the microbes <laughs> killed the aliens, but that's another story. Anyway, well, listen, thank you so much. Um, best to you and your family. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll catch up again soon and uh, in London or wherever, all right? With pleasure. As the Queen says, until we meet again. Okay, good to see okay. you. Take Bye. care. Bye. Thank you.